everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast and Merry Christmas. And we're really excited today. We are here to talk with an actor again. We haven't talked to an actor in so long because of this strike. And, uh, and uh, we're so excited the strike got resolved. We're so excited that they got a good deal, hopefully. Uh, so great news for all our actor friends. But uh, we're, we're happy to have actors back and to have Catherine Davis back. Yay! Welcome back. This is your uh, third third interview I think third or fourth I, I can't remember but yeah so, welcome back thank you thanks for having me back um it's always lovely to touch base I think this is like our third year yeah I think it's third so yeah. into that. like I'm, I'm pretty sure people are like oh I'm fed up with her at Christmas time <laughs> but I'm I'm very grateful for continued work and your support yeah. at the Hallmark team as yeah well, well so. how have you been how is this I know it's been kind of a, an interesting time for for uh, the actors you know this is this I, I know it's a little different up there in Canada, but, yeah. but, uh, but, uh, how have you been? I've been well, it's been, it's been different because, um, the Canadian, uh, industry is very heavily reliant on American production. Yeah. So it was a challenging year for, um, our union up here. And it was so important for the SAG members to get what they wanted, get what they needed for mm-hmm. a, a living wage and yeah. AI protections and residual payments because, my own union comes up for renegotiations in 2025 and mm-hmm. however SAG fought for it, right. we get something along the same lines. So sure. it's definitely important for our brothers and sisters in arms in the States to, yeah. to fight what they want and deserve because yeah. we're going to need to to come in with that same yeah. force and passion and, and hope that our, our talent is understood and rewarded as mm-hmm. it should. Definitely. That makes sense. Yeah. It had to be kind of an interesting experience for the actors. I've thought about it is they've just kind of had to just sort of watch and see like you haven't been able to promote projects the same way that you usually do. And so that's sort of, it must've been an interesting experience (laughs) to just kind of watch from the, from the sidelines. (laughs) Yes. It could be nerve wracking too, because you, of of course that you don't want to go on the the wrong side of your union because sure. it's all, so you have to stand together yeah. because that's how things get resolved. So um, I think it was, yeah, a little yeah. bit nervous. You know, thank goodness there's people within the industry that will uh, instruct you on how and how yeah. to do things so that you're not breaking with, yeah. um, with your, with your yeah. union. Yeah. Right. Well, so last year you had, at least in my opinion, two hits with, Santa's got style, six degrees of Santa, especially Santa's got style. We love that movie so much. And I'm curious because that movie was like admittedly silly. It was a silly concept, but like, (laughs) but it just, it worked. I went with it because I just liked the two of you so much and it was funny. And Brian Sims was so funny. And so was, was that a concern for you? Where you were like, are people going to think that is this too much? Like too ridiculous, the style in Santa or, or did you just have confidence in it? I had confidence yeah. to be honest. To say, when I first received the script and I got the little teeny synopsis and it said like Mrs. Doubtfire esque, I grew up with Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, Robin Williams legend and himself. And so sure. I, I never really, I knew I was going to have to have, the Sally Field moment of the Daniel kind of thing with Frank. But because he adapted such different characters of, on the one side, Ethan, who's sort of riddled with insecurities and kind of dorky and like, uh, you know, like punch him in the arm kind of thing where he's just doesn't have that gravitas about him. And then you go to the side of Rafe where he's suave and confident. It was, it was so interesting to see the different sides of Franco and, yeah, it's frank that you're working yeah. with, and you just, you know, it's um, when you're on camera and you just really focus on the other actor, you're just witnessing their humanity, and it's all, mm-hmm. you know, how they affect you, how you affect them. So mm-hmm. I didn't really think that yeah. it would be perceived really as mm-hmm. as being sort of silliness mm-hmm. and. No. Well, I mean, I meant that as like a total compliment. I think it really captures sort of the feel of the screwball comedies from the like 40s and 50s, you know, of like there there are over the top. They are silly, but that's part of the appeal is yes. is part of the fun of it. Uh, so I, I really, I really enjoyed it. And of course, Christmas on Fifth Avenue, all time favorite. 
Um, you know, I love that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later in a bit, but, uh, but you, you've worked now with Amy force three times. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just curious, like, could we see another, you see more? I would do let's manifest it and put it out (laughs) to the universe. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think actually I've worked with Amy four times. Oh, but he he did two episodes on that. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. It must be so nice to, uh, to go back and basically have the same boss over and over again. And you've got that comfort of comfort level. Yeah. She's, she's an amazing director because she gives you the, the freedom to play, to explore. Um, but then she can offer such beautiful insight in a moment. Um, I remember being on Santa's got style and we were, it's the last day and we were filming the scene with me in the car and she just gave me, you know, a quick little note. And suddenly it, it sort of like, you know, thud went my stomach. And I was like, oh <laughs> my goodness, I get it kind of thing. And so the, it was just that extra added nuance mm-hmm. um, to the character of Madison in that moment that even for myself as being in the world of Madison for weeks beforehand, even mm-hmm. I didn't see how that all tied in together. Because right. that's director for is they're the third eye you know actors are kind of focused on their character in the world and how they react and interact in it and then you know you have the director that can just you know pinpoint and and kind of pave a way forward for you and so her in that moment it just literally I I went like what oh yeah you're too good kind of thing and then (laughs) just there was that extra layer of nuance yeah she gives you the confidence yes and so like yeah that makes sense ho 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 we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies patreon do you love hallmarkies podcast especially at christmas do you enjoy the holiday previews recaps interviews and bonus episodes If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. You had Welcome to Valentine this year for Hallmark. Uh, so that you haven't done a ton of non-Christmas. Uh, so was that fun to kind of do something different? It was. Um, it was fascinating to see how the production managed to get so much Valentine's themed <laughs> Galia. Right, like, right. Everywhere you look, there were there was hearts and pink and <laughs> tinsel and yeah. I never knew that there was that much merchandise available. <laughs> well, thing. I mean, it is a home. Well, people joke, oh, it's a Hallmark holiday invented by. It's I mean, it wasn't invented by Hallmark people. So, people talk about that. So it it was lovely to, to work on that one and to uh-huh. to show up on set and see how the crew, um, the production design elements of it, and the little you know flecks of of color and like the running theme of pink and red and just love throughout that was really mm-hmm. great yeah that was fun all right well let's talk about planes trains and christmas trees and uh, uh so you must have been excited when you found out oh we're working with olivia again yes so yeah huge um there were a few there were many bonuses to doing this film um the offer for the role came through on my birthday so i was like Yippee! Yay! You know? <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday to me. It was just a lovely <laughs> to get that on my birthday. And then I started to read through the script and I was probably about eight pages in and my phone went bing. And it's Olivier over uh Instagram. And he's like, Are you doing planes, trains, and Christmas trees? And I'm like, <laughs> Are you playing Brett? 
<laughs> so we found out through each other. That's funny. We found out I was doing it actually. But um, as soon as I knew, I was like, oh, this is going to be so fun. Because that was mm-hmm. our um, first reunion after um, Christmas on Fifth <laughs> Avenue. And yeah, we'd met before during the production of Wedding Planners. We never had scenes together. And then, yeah, of course, Christmas on Fifth. Um, we were together as, um, yeah, Eva. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, so it was so it good. Was lovely to get like, that reunion back. Uh-huh. Um, and made it so much easier knowing day one yeah. that the person that you're working opposite, you just have that different levels of trust with them mm-hmm. in the work. And so yeah. you have extra, you know, nuances and extra little bits of gold to yeah. products, already have that established working relationship. Yeah. I mean, I'll honestly, I, uh, I've interviewed a lot of pairings of, you know, different, you know, leads for these different films. And you two were probably the best chemistry as in in an interview I've ever had. It's certainly in top five for sure. I mean, everybody's always, you know, nice and friendly and everything, but (laughs) if you had told me that the two of you were a couple, I would have believed it. That's how like, it was really good. And we were, I was just like, wow, these, cause I love the movie. And then, then they, and then, you know, I requested the interview and it, I just was like, wow, these two are so good. And so it makes sense. Why wouldn't you have you two of you back together working oh, on a sh- uh, film again? It's so sweet. Um, Ollie and I, like, I think we have just like a, a love for each other. I yeah. think we just respect it each It translates. Other. It really does. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it did at times become challenging with this production because there's so much familiarity between mm-hmm. us that a couple of times the director had to say to us, like, um, don't forget, you were <laughs> the day before. And we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to like each other in this scene. <laughs> Gee, there's, that, to me, there's an elf scene and that yeah. um, there were just every take was different. And that's when we had to be reminded of like, oh, yeah, you only just met. I'm like, right. Yeah. <laughs> or say you know, one thing leads to another and then improvising and playing off each yeah. other, giggling. So um, yeah, Olivier and I, I think we both come from similar backgrounds in terms of our performance training and so forth. And so we just, um, it it translates that we're just sort of like, yeah, compatible. Yeah. And, uh, even earlier this year, I had a audition come through for a pilot for a TV show, mm-hmm. CBC TV show, and I was I immediately messaged him and I'm like, "You need to ask your agent." I read the pilot. I'm like, "You have to ask your agent <laughs> to let you read for this role." Oh my gosh, I would and die! And I was WhatsApping him, being like, "You have to read for this role. This is literally me and you." Yeah. I don't know what happened with the production, but <laughs> need to like get your agent on it. I'll get mine on yeah. it. This is the pairing and it makes oh. sense. So I, I hope that alongside with Amy, I hope there's reunions for yeah. Olivia and myself down the road. We still you know, keep it- you know what we gotta do is uh, it, uh, we gotta have you and Olivia and Amy do a royal movie. It would be perfect. You have already have the British accent, which you know <laughs> that usually the royal person is British, even if it's in like you know eastern europe it doesn't matter um and so you would be perfect you could be like the common everyday guy it could be like roman holiday roman holiday modern he could be the reporter you be the princess amy can direct it let's i love i mean come on rather intimidating the idea of (laughs) trying to step into the show like putting one toe in the shoe of audrey hepburn but hey Come on. Who wouldn't watch that? I mean, come on. <laughs> but, but you you mentioned the uh, the elf outfits. Yes. That must have been a hoot. It was, oh my gosh, it was it was too much fun because one of the lines is I'm like, wow, you're really rocking those tights. And sorry. <laughs> um and in when I saw, you know, Olivier all put up in his gear, because I didn't see it until we were all together, our fissings are separate from each other. Um, his pants weren't tight enough. And so I was like, well, it says about, you know, 
them being tight in the script. And so bless his heart, he let us like roll them up and tighten oh, okay. those tights uh-huh. yeah. way down so that when you actually see them, they're pinned at the back, but it's like, uh-huh. <laughs> you're seeing, like as, as, you know, the script wanted them to be so. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's Esther Hatch and her new book, One Small Secret. Step into the whimsical world of One Small Secret, where a dash of laughter and a sprinkle of Christmas cheer makes for the perfect festive read. Reuben Palmer is not only a hotel empire icon, he is also on every woman's Christmas list, but Cadence knows better than to fall for him. However, when a very adorable package ends up on her bed, Reuben is suddenly on her doorstep, wanting to be part of her life. Inspired by the classic movies Bachelor Mother and Bundle of Joy, this workplace rom-com is the perfect book to curl up and read with a cup of hot cocoa and your favorite blanket. So you can pick up One Small Secret anywhere you purchase novels or using our affiliate link down below. That was fun. Yeah, usually you don't always see our leading la- lady and guy uh, in the uh, elf gear. So that was fun. <laughs> that was a fun element of the script. Cold because it only came to about here on me and it was silk. Mm. But I got to like, you might notice I have different colored socks. Mm. red and then green on the other side and everything I mean it's just so fun being (laughs) stirred at that moment with my little floppy stuff so I really enjoyed it was this one shot in 2021 or 20 I know it's it it was in Canada and other places last year uh but was this shot in 2022 early or 2021 2022 2022 okay really really early uh very early January, yeah. very late January, early February. Uh-huh. So yeah, we were dealing with the the elements, the raw elements of the Canadian winter at that time. <laughs> yeah, and what's that like shooting Christmas movies all year, which is, was basically your 2022? Yes. Um, I mean, being in the Christmas spirit all year. <laughs> I, lo- I love it. It's magical walking on a set and just seeing what the crew can do to transform uh-huh. Um, I still cannot figure out if it's better to be cold or hot. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I filmed right. Christmas in July and then I filmed it in the depths of winter. And I still think that I, I'd rather be too hot than I would. Oh, too okay. Cold. Because um, once like the feet or toes are cold and then the knees, once the knees start to wobble. Yeah. It affects all other areas for me. And then I'm like sort of quaking. My voice is mm. sort of. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it keeps me in jolly spirits all year. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess at least in the cold, you can just keep putting layers on so you can, it can add to your character where you can't take stuff off. <laughs> Not in Hallmark movies. That's true. Once you're <laughs> down to your skin, mate, there's nothing coming off further. Yeah. <laughs> um, or my, my thing is my feet. So once mm, my feet yeah. Then you would think like, oh, I'm putting heat pads on above and below my toes. But for me, I'm like, if I can't move my toes, mm-hmm. even if they're sandwiched between heating pads, they start to go too yeah. cold. And then that starts to spread up my legs from there. Yeah. So, yeah, it's no matter like, and because of everything is specifically designed, like, of course, you can wear thermals and try to layer underneath. And I think I had like heating pads. Um, I remember I went back to the hotel and then the next morning <laughs> I fell asleep the next morning I looked in the mirror and I was like oh my what's happened because I had this pink rash across my chest and stomach but it's because I had the heating pads and I'd just gone to sleep with them like that so oh. <laughs> I, but I was like what happened I kind of, <laughs> oh wait it's good. and I found all the heating pads still in the bed I'm like right that's that's why yeah <laughs> like oops sorry <laughs> Yeah, I know no phantom yeah. night vibes overnight or anything. It's literally because I still had the heating pad. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what would you say to people is special about this Plains, Trains, and Christmas Trees? What do you think uh, should make people want to tune in? I think audiences will really enjoy the relationships that we have in it. Um, not only is it Olivier and myself reuniting, but we worked with Rick Wall, and he is too too funny for words say like he he's inventive on set he it was just like he, he was playing the uncle of olivier and it was just a like they everything fit together so so perfectly in that mm-hmm. moment we got, we're all still in touch we actually 
we're planning to do um, our own screening like together. Oh, fun for this but I'm myself I'm, I'm away um so I'm in Ottawa right now filming a production so couldn't make it for that so we're doing something in December mm. I think that chemistry people will really enjoy that mm-hmm. as well um there's like the little hints of humor um between myself and Olivier there's little nuances that I know that I enjoy because it's literally on screen it's it's Kat and Olivier in those moments right um, I think audiences will really love the production design. The, there's, um, without giving too much away, there's a Christmas tree decorating competition. And I have to say the tree that Olivier and I decorated <laughs> was the best. I don't know where it fell on me during production. But um, it's it was really beautiful seeing like, the design of all of these different trees and all the different colors used and so forth. So I think audiences will really enjoy it. It's festive. Okay. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. I have some fun Christmas questions for you. These are new ones. I just tested it out. So if there's any, some rough ones, I'm sorry, oh. but these are new, new Chris, fun Christmas questions. So okay. here, here's a tough question. When is the proper time to set up and take down your Christmas tree slash decorations? Okay. So <laughs> I think controversial. Me, it is. For me, December 1st would be the Christmas tree going up. But my mom's always been really, really strict growing up that we were only allowed to put the tree up a week before Christmas. So I was like, I I always crave it. I always want to to see up from December 1st, but it's usually the week before. And then it has to come down on 12th night after Christmas. So I think that's okay. I was going to say, if you, if you set, well, a lot of times people did the week before, because if you have a live tree, you, mm. you can't have it that much more than that. And yeah. you know, that that's because a week before plus 12 days, you know, that's 20 days of the live tree. That's pretty long. Um, so, uh, that's, uh, that I think that's why people sometimes did that, but yeah. it's so hard to do live trees, you know, it's tough, but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's I usually do mine over uh, over Thanksgiving weekend, like somewhere I set up my tree somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah. <laughs> American Thanksgiving is so much later than Canadian. I mean, if someone was mm-hmm. putting up their tree. Oh yeah, that's true. This year that yeah. it would <laughs> I mean, there's some shops I've seen in, in Canada that have already had Christmas decorations up before Halloween. Mm-hmm. I walked into the store and I'm like, oh, oh yeah. It's exploded i'm like it's not even halloween i've seen it in like august no yeah oh i have yeah yeah <laughs> just yeah. like calm down yeah, i think the cool. disneyland starts i think starts their christmas stuff in august <laughs> i think wow <laughs> yeah it's intense uh all right what is your favorite holiday activity like going Ooh. to see the lights or you know skating or Whatever, Ooh. building gingerbread houses, whatever you like to do, it's your favorite. I like to overeat. <laughs> but also, <All> in. <laughs> because we're from the UK originally, there's so many Christmas classics. I think I've mentioned before um, comedy classics that have their yeah. Christmas. So it's all about binging them, mm. while eating too much. And then it, usually my dad and I will take uh, the dogs out for a you know, Christmas afternoon walk usually in snow that's up to our thighs in depth or something. And it's just, it's really beautiful. Christmas day always ha- happens to be very clear skies and it mm-hmm. has been in Toronto. So we go for a walk and the sun's out and the dogs are jumping in the snow and it's just very peaceful. Yeah. Do you, 
he's like, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. You know, it's a nice feeling. Even though you're yeah. cold, it's it's warm. It's yeah. a warm day. Do you have a Christmas day or Christmas Eve holiday meal tradition that you always have? Uh, not on the eve, but over the Christmas period, um, mince pies. Oh. Which, <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about here, but a lot of people don't. They think mince mm-hmm. eat as in they made from an animal, but it's not. It's right, made- right. It's like dried fruit, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dried fruit dried fruit um sort of cooked down and then put in pastry with icing sugar <laughs> brandy good. as well brandy butter custard so that's my uh that's my guilty very guilty. Yeah. <laughs> what is your gift giving style do you kind of look for presents all throughout the year or are you like or do you are you just sort of more spontaneous or or how do you kind of plan your gift giving I am a mix. Sometimes like I, I listen out throughout the year and if, if they say so, I'm a bit of a practical uh-huh. gift giver. Yeah. But also I'm sort of sentimentalist. I think that most value in life comes from making memories. And so I love traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, so my family and I have always been a little bit more conservative when it's come to buying gifts. You know, mm-hmm. we, we don't buy as many gifts at Christmas time. Maybe one thing for each of us. And then we'll maybe plan a trip somewhere yeah. or, you know, go see a concert, go yeah. see a feed show or something, something that lives up here yeah. and has that richness of life experience. I think that makes a lot of sense. Are you a snow fan or not so much? I like snow. <laughs> <laughs> I like okay. snow for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. I said yeah. like, earlier there, I literally could not see out the window from my residence in Oswa right now because there's just a like, snowdrift going over. And then I'm like, oh, pretty. Okay, bye. You can go <laughs> and <laughs> once it gets all muddy and churned up and everything. I'm like, okay, it's spring. Spring. I'm a I'm a snow fan as long as I don't have to drive in it. And I have to admit, like it's fun before Christmas. After Christmas, it starts to I'm like, uh especially once it gets into April, you know, it's getting late. You're like, Oh, go away <laughs> my dogs love playing in the snow especially my black labrador yeah. but the other one is a bit of a sponge for everything and so it means <laughs> like daily baths whenever he goes out we have to wash his feet because oh. he like, just soaks up everything on the streets <laughs> of you know, toronto everything so yeah uh, yeah it's i like it for five minutes myself person <laughs> hey guys you can go <laughs> All right. Yes or no? Is Die Hard a Christmas movie in your eyes? Okay, I'm very ashamed to say I have never seen Die Hard. <laughs> never seen Die Hard. <laughs> However, I've always found it very strange that people think it's a Christmas film. I well, don't... I won't spoil it for you. I I do think it is a Christmas film because the whole point of him being in LA is is for Christmas, and the whole thing is set in a Christmas party. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. I won't. I don't want to spoil okay. anything else. So That's I, I think funny. it is. Uh, in, in there's even a scene where he has he's wearing a Santa hat at one point in the movie. Oh, I mean, wow. it, See, so I it's high octane action film, <laughs> multiple you know sequels. Yeah. So yeah, I think my <laughs> ignorance of the synopsis. Would- <laughs> <laughs> well, you should watch. It's a good movie. You should watch it. Um, there are movies though that get kind of traditionally <laughs> their Christmas and yeah. I don't know for some reason Jurassic Park is one in the UK. Oh really? That's random. Yeah. yeah. Or it like the a- Ten Commandments or certain movies that don't really have anything to do with Christmas somehow got played at Christmas. So some people think yeah. of it or Sound of Music. I've heard that. Sound so of Music. Random. Yeah. Random. But um, okay, a couple more. Uh, do you uh, are, do you like candy canes or not? Steam candy cane or not? I like candy canes, but they have to be mint flavored candy canes. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. like, no, 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 not for any of that. Very <laughs> Stretch stuff that no, it has to be like peppermint, spearmint. Like yeah. Minty. So, yeah. <laughs> the little tiny candy canes, they always slightly aggravate me because I, you know, I try and take them out of the packaging so carefully to not snap them every <laughs> right. time I snap them. Yeah. Well, last question. When is the appropriate date to start listening to Christmas music? 
I think it's along the same lines as my Christmas tree putting it up. I think it's December 1st. <laughs> December 1st. Okay. <laughs> it seems kind of counter for me because they're like, what do you mean? You're already invading the screens. They're Christmas. <laughs> mid-November everything yeah, yeah but I mean, there are songs that I listen to throughout the year as well you know uh John Lennon's Christmas song and um uh George Michael you know they come up periodically on my playlist and everything so all year yeah <laughs> well very good you did it you answered all the questions so <laughs> Uh, so thank you so much for coming and talking with us. This was a lot of fun to catch up and, and everybody check out the uh, planes, trains and Christmas trees. And, uh, and thanks again for coming on the podcast. And if people want to follow you on socials, how do they do that? My, uh, Instagram page is the, so T H E underscore Catherine, my first name, K T H R Y N underscore Davis D A V I S. Great. All right. Great. Well, thanks so much. And I uh, hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. Same to you. And thanks for having me on and your continued support from the whole, the whole Marquis team. I appreciate it. <laughs> Bye. I put your thoughts in the comment section uh, or on Twitter and you can follow me at Rachel's reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes and on Goodreads. So please check that out. Also make sure you're following the podcast, the Homework Pod and Homework Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps a lot. And if you are if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which is so much fun. So it's a great thing to be part of the patron. And then we have the merch store, which has some fun new designs. So please take a look at that. They have kind of a Barbie inspiration this year. So I'm real proud of them and take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much. And wish you all a very Merry Christmas. We'll talk to you later. Bye.